So this is the very important features. And now with, with these feelings, we can try to quantify, which means they give us the measurement of this kind of the compression, tension, or stretching, or shortening. This one can be done uh, by this. For example, uh, to illustrate, let me pick up um, a, a test. For example, let me pick up, let me use the word. So this is a fiber we pick. And the position of this fiber is parametric. So that means we're going to vary the position up or down. Uh, depends on our needs. And the distance between the two uh, fibers is y. y is parametric. Okay, if we pick the positive y, then that means the testing fiber is above. If we pick Y negative, then the, we place this testing fiber below uh, this kind of specific things. So here, let me get rid of this one and get more writing here. So this is this is Y. So that means from here to here, is how much the distance is. If we measure from this center to here, so that is a radius of the curvature. This is sigma minus y. Are okay? Okay. So for this fiber, so let me call this fiber How about this? Let me give a name. Uh, this fiber is A and B. Okay, so this is A and this is B. For fiber, AB. deformed the length of AB basically equal to L. And by reading this figure, before deformed, the length of the AB equal to L, assuming the model is uniform. And after <coughs> deformed, the length of AB, by reading this graph, Right now, the fiber is a portion of a circular segment which has a radius sigma minus y. And so we take the, we multiply the sigma minus y, we multiply the radius by the angle that will give us the length of the AB after the form. Are we good? And one more thing, what is L? For this CD, the fiber CD is the specific one. That means after and before and after the form, the fiber CD is unchanged. So that means the fiber CD has the length CD equal to L equal to rho times theta, right? So with that information here, we can see this is theta, rho theta. Okay, now we can see back to our chapter one, we define the strain in, uh, I think chapter two or chapter one, I forgot, whatever. So in chapter one, do you remember uh, we have the model is this. 
if we have the loading and this is the corresponding deformation, if the original length is L, if this is a delta. So we define the strain equal to the deformation divided by original length. We pick up this formula here. Okay, this concept to study this one. So we can study the strain. So that means what is the delta before deformed? So the delta deformation of fiber AB is we call the delta AB. And this one is the length, um, the, um, let me call this is two, let me call this is one. So that is two minus one. We, in by definition, we take the length after deformed, subtract the length before deformed. So that is the definition here. So for this case, that would be sigma minus y times theta minus rho theta. So here, that will be equal to minus y times theta. <coughs> Almost there. So therefore, the strain will be equal to delta AB divided by his original length will be minus y theta divided by L uh, divided by rho theta. So that is minus y divided by rho. <coughs> will be okay? Any questions about this kind of deduction? What kind of strain? Is she strain or the normal strain? Normal strain. Why is normal strain? Because here you talk about, we talk about is this. The before deformed, the fiber is that long. And after deformed, the fiber could be that short. So from here you can see that the deformation actually is normal to change the length to compress for this, for this uh, demonstration. So naturally, we use this one because we identify this is a normal strain. So we use this symbol. Are we okay? So again, uh, from the beginning to now is this. We make assumption like this. And from here, we further, one step further is we identify the specific fiber which CD here unchanged in length before and after deformation. So basically, we take the CD as a reference to help us to quantify the deformation in terms of strain. That's our first step. Okay, think about this kind of process. So now uh, we still haven't been there yet, but give you a little bit more um, qualitative description before we move on. So now for this deformed model, Here, I want to draw a little bit bigger uh, to demonstrate in the And again, here, the drawing is so exaggerated, but in the true case, it won't be like this. So this is a spatial fiber. And again, let me put the CD. CD is a fiber which keeps a change in length. So all the fibers on the top is get shortened, and like we know, we got a feeling before uh, like this. Right now, for this case, it's like this. All the fibers above the CD get shortened, and with this formula, we can be further quantifying the distributions. You can see the strain is proportional to y. What is y? We remember that y is a distance measured from our reference, which is CD. So more away, farther away from the CD, the fiber will get shortened more, get deformed more, right? So from here, who can tell me where, if, uh, which fiber had the largest uh, 
uh, negative strain on the top, very top, which fiber has the largest uh, the, the uh, positive strain, the bottom here. And the distribution should be linear because you can see the strain is proportional to y and rho. Rho is a radius of a curvature constant. Once we determine, once we apply the torque, the rho is constant. So basically here, can we draw this one here? So this is the deformed shape. And let me try to draw this one in a better way. So for example, usually in our textbook, this is the model. Let me do this one here. So this is our model. We only take a portion here. So this is the specific, for example, this is a D, and C is uh, go the other side. So here I take out only portions. So in our textbook, in actually in most of the textbook, we try to draw the distributions of the strain is on um, this kind of the undeformed model for better illustrations. The, for example, if the bending is like this case, we know that the, on the top portion is negative, will be everything will be in compression, lower portion will be in tension. The distribution of the stress of the strain is like this. Okay, and the formula is this. For example, if the point here is y, then this magnitude epsilon equal to minus y divided by rho. So pretty much we have a little bit more quantitative description about the deformation about this the strain in, in the model. And this formula provides us the very good insight into the bending deformation. And for example, if this material has the Young's modulus, <coughs> E, then which means we have the distribution of the stress. Bending like this, we have the distribution of the stress like this. The same manners here. The stress equal to minus E Y divided by rho. <laughs> so from here we can see we have the pretty much quantitative description. But anyone has any questions about applying this equation in calculation? If you don't, I do have. Why? I can tell you the two equations, either this one or this one, that is useful to help us to make a conclusion distribution of the bending stress, which is the normal stress. And on the top side, for example, here, let me draw these cross sections. If this is a cross section, and this is that specific. So on the top, this is a cross section. All the material point on the cross section on the top is have a tendency to compress into the board, right? So that means on the top, this is compression. At the bottom, that is all the material point since has been a tendency to be get out of the board, right? The two equations, this one or this one, is helpful to uh, identify the distribution of the normal stress, we call the bending stress, is in linear distribution. It's not uniform, okay? It's not uniform, it's in linear distributions. However, the two equation, either this one or this one, doesn't help much because what is the value of rho? Don't know yet. Okay, so 
to answer this question, pretty much we need another probably half hour. So why not today we stop here, and at least you need to get the kind of stereotype in your mind. Keep in mind this kind of thing.